So the Teenage Engineering TX6 does so much stuff, like despite its extremely diminutive size, it's a six channel, 12 channel, is that right? Six channel, but they're stereo. Six stereo channel mixer with a drum machine built in, and it also can record things if you plug in a USB like hub to it, but it also has effects. And Matt is going to show us the effects Matt is wrapping Teenage Engineering. Um, like plus, we've got all the other toys to play with. So, Matt, what are the effects? So, um, the effects here between the two banks are things like reverb, delay, chorus, uh, and then also things like tape stop, bit reduction, distortion, uh, all things that you can apply either to each individual channel or across the whole mix. Um, Sweet. So you can use them as a punch in while you're performing, um, or you can apply them to something while you're recording it, because um, it is an audio interface as well. Um, yes. So, so you can actually nice. track yeah. stuff through it as yeah. well. Yeah, to your computer. Shall we hear yes. your... Yeah, so we've got a loop going. Um, have a quick listen to that. Sounds really nice. So the fader there, I mean, we've got on their control over the, um, like a, a sweepable filter. This is the per channel of Frex now, or the, the set of settings. Can we hear that? Um, yeah, sure. So you can really take the bottom end out. This is more for sort of quick mixing. Um, if you wanted to like introduce like a drop or perhaps like scoop the low end out to make space for other stuff that's going on in the mix. Um, what else we got? So we've also got um, EQ, which is what these knobs default to. So you can kind of oh, yeah. really boost or cut the low end. The sort of shelves on the high and low, and then there's a sort of bump in the middle, which hopefully you can sort of see on the screen there if I do my awkward crab. <laughs> <laughs> awkward crab. Yeah. The Matt story. I mean, the amount of times we'll be trying to show people something, and then it's like, that's great, but could you just move could your you hands move your out hand? the way? Yeah. So I'm like adjusting these little... And these don't have to be set to EQ either. They can also be um, aux sends where you've got a couple of outputs on the bottom. You can go out to other effects. Uh, you've got um, the ability to control the sort of little drum machine and synth sounds that are in there, uh, which we'll get to in a bit, I think, probably. What, can you hear some, can we hear some different effects on that? What else can we apply to Yeah, so maybe thing? maybe let's move on to these ones here because they're the real kind of like obvious effects that are going on. So if we come back out there, we've got them both on actually, but none are applied to this just yet. So if we switch this on, we'll check what it is with shift and press the button. So it should be doing a delay, but that'll be because we need to hold the track button and you can see the amount going to each channel. So this has got nothing yet, but if I turn it up. Oh, yeah. And the idea being you can maybe set some different rhythms. Whereas, but then you can immediately what? take it out. I want to draw our lovely audience's attention to the fact that this is beat detecting your OP1. That's right. So if I go to the menu here, as if by magic, the clock source for the mixer can be set by a number of different things. It can be just internally set. You can tap tempo it. Um, you can also, I think you can send like a sync signal into it. Oh, Maybe wow. that's wrong, actually. No, I think you can. Maybe get rid of that bit because I can't remember. <laughs> it can. Let's just say. Okay, it. let's just say. It can. Or it can't. Um, <laughs> so uh, what? Right. Let me hear the delay again. Can sure. Change any um, more of the settings. Let's just hear it doing its little magic. That is actually really good. Despite the um, considerable vastness of the TX6, like that is that is quite performative. Well, these are obviously really small. You were mentioning, mm. you know, it's it's fine for like setting things, especially things yeah. like EQ. But if you wanted yeah. um, to build like a computer-free rig where you did use the TX6 as your main mixer and you want like big performative controls, mm. you were saying you can actually map a mixer yeah. controller. So you can map a full size, like a Novation Launch Control yeah. XL with big like separated knobs. You can map them to parameters of the effects. Exactly. Engine. So really cool. all of the parameters, not, not just the actual controls themselves, but the parameters within them. So where you could assign something different to the, uh, the encoders, you can actually just 
map that exact control to like a bank of knobs. It doesn't have to be the launch control or there's a wide variety of MIDI controllers that you could use yeah. even just to expand the controls. Because um, I, I find the faders on these are actually quite yeah, surprising. Right. You just sort of grab the top and it is very, very easily and, you know, continuously adjustable. You don't really hear it. Um, I know a lot of folks do that with electron gear as well. They use mm -hmm. external MIDI controllers to like break out all the parameters. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the, the principle we're talking yeah. about here. Um, but if you weren't necessarily, you're a fan of what this does, but not necessarily what um, the faders feel like, you can then map it out to other yeah. faders too. And again, it is computer free for those. <laughs> For the, for the commenter who'll be like, why are you getting this? And then adding a MIDI controller, it's, you know, it's there's no computer. It's and it's so, it's you would have something that is so small as well. It's like an insanely small rig. So um, we've heard some delay. What about other effects like maybe um, reverb and chorus or... Let's have a look. Those so, kind of staples. Um, maybe we could introduce something from here. I don't know if that's oh, yeah. is that me talking or... Right, so this is not this is not this confusing is, at all. This is you <laughs> reading right. from the website. Yes, uh, speaking through the CM15 as well. Just to add. So if I just uh, let's put some effects on it though, please, God, <laughs> let's put some effects on it. What are you saying about my scratching? There's more to do with my voice, honestly, but that's that fine. Right. So yeah, you're speaking through this little mic. Yeah. Sounds really good. Okay, okay. Uh, let's try some different effects. So we got a reverb in there. Do we have reverb parameters like you know, this is sounding really bright? So can we darken it. You've got basic oh, wow. settings where you can change it to small, medium, large. Um, there's not the. Um, ability to get in there and do a lot of parameter diving, but these are punching effects. So yeah. they're meant to be like immediate yeah. and just, you know, a quick burst of something while you're doing a performance or a jam. So is that on one now? Yeah, I see. Can you apply it to, did you say is it shift? What is it? So doing? when you're in the, in the screen where you're looking at the, um, the effect, you hold the button of the track that you want to uh, add the effect to. And then you turn this encoder. I see. And this is where the MIDI controller could come in handy. You could map those aux sends to uh, the MIDI controller instead of just using the single encoder and, and picking each one. So you could more quickly add other tracks to that reverb send. Can you leave tails on? Um, it would only be through, you, you'd have to leave the actual effect on and then bring it out because it does it does immediately remove it again for if you're doing some sort of build up with a reverb and a drop you might need it to come in much more quickly more yeah. often I would think but um, that is the way that one is set up <laughs> sounds kind of weird I like it right? so what is it we did we, we held this down oh no uh, you held that down yeah and then you turned yeah I see and you can do that while it's switched on to kind of hear it build in as well. So you don't have to hold it as you do it, but you... can kind of build it in. Build and it can you, out, you can stack two effects. Yeah, so I think I'm right in saying... I don't know if we if reverb's necessarily the best one. Maybe we could yeah. just quickly look at... Uh, chorus. What are you saying about my reverb? <laughs> <laughs> i got yes. nothing against your reverb, <laughs> but yeah, if we're stacking a few, it might be good to uh, try a few. So this is chorus, which is just adding okay. a bit of width and modulation. Yeah. Okay. And we'll make sure we've got yeah. as much of that okay. as we want, which we do. Yeah. So let's add a second effect. Yeah. I'm cycling the play button here. So that's the bit crush effect. Yeah, I know. Um, we've also got uh, distortion. Yeah. 
So again, those have different types where you've got this push one, which kind of takes out the high ends. You've got like a blown up speaker sound, just a bit of drive and then destroy, which is really, really heavy. Uh, we've also got uh, tremolo, which tracks to the speed of the... Can we stick that on here? So, yeah. Is it we did? Wait, wait, you showed me. No. No, hold it down. Oh. It's okay, there's a few different ones. We'll go. So Can't just mess around. And you got shift, or you got shift in the effect to be looking at it, and then you can then choose whether it's on that particular channel or all of them. So it's at this point, it's just on there. Yeah, nice. But it's not on the Satan voice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If your mother could hear you say that. You can control the depth of this one. So you can kind of... That's cool. What else? What other sort of effect do we have? Uh, oh, that sounds good. We've got freeze, which I think will be good on this one. If we just take that out just for a second. Wait for some... Oh, wow. There you are. <laughs> So it's like a reverb, a frozen reverb. Yeah. Um, it works quite well on music as well, if we bring the music back in. Oh, wow. it can be a bit crazy. And how is it again? We could apply it to this, maybe? Um, or would it sound? Yeah, no, that is applied to this now. Oh, so it's, wow. it's just grabbing the audio and where you pitch it, you can it will kind of you can hear there it's got that the sort of bell sound. Oh yeah. Sounds granular. Sounds like a granular cloud. Yeah, I don't know if it's just kind of like... Is it just a... I don't know the specifics of the effect. I think it is just grabbing like a very small segment and then cycling through it very quickly and, mm. and freezing the... Oh. <laughs> so, when you're ready to leave... What? When you're ready to don't leave your set, now. sorry. <laughs> so it progresses. It's like... Uh... I had a, I've never noticed it doing this before, but... <laughs> That's how Apex Twin does it. <laughs> That'll be the snare, I reckon. Can you do two of these at once? They don't stack together. Uh, or are they on I think. The I think... They're, they're they're not to be, series, some of the effects are latching, some of them are like momentary, like freezes. Momentary for obvious reasons. Yeah. And can the effects be run from one into the other? Like, are they sort of, do you know what I mean? Like, um, can you put them in series or are they in parallel, basically, where, you know, they both act independently? Honestly, know. I'm not 100% sure on the answer oh, okay. to that question. Um, it was my understanding that it's a FX1 and FX2 sort of, uh, I don't know, there is a diagram of it somewhere mm. in the manual, so... We should ask the FM. It's fine. Yeah. But it's really, it's interesting. Those are a lot more creative than I gave them credit for, as it were. You know, it's like, that's wild. Mm. Are there any other highlights, any ones we should miss? Um, there's like a fun tape stop oh, thing. yeah. Which can either be quite slow, or it can be sorry. Stop. It can be like a like a tape buffer type thing. Um, oh, we should definitely put that on your voice. Uh, yeah, okay. let's do that. Okay. So, um, there are thoughts, ideas, and fragments. Oh, okay. No, nope. I've done the wrong thing here. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, so we need to do that and that. Let's get the pong. Okay. Yeah. Take your heart out, Radiohead. <laughs> Who needs a chaos pad now with a TX6? <laughs> oh, can we do a reverb blast on that? Or like, or maybe some delay on there or something. Yeah. Or the tremolo. 
Yeah, I it's, think it is it running is. into the it's retail. Going, it's yeah. going looper into the, or the pong into the delay. Which makes sense, right? Because yeah. it's, a, it's a send effect. So you, yeah. I like that sound. It's come out. All right. Oh. Oh wow, I've turned you into a little like, hi-hat. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want my delay to like, like a to bloom hours. Yeah, yeah, bloom. Dang it. But that's really cool. Uh, yeah, amazing. So, yeah, more than just a tiny matchbox, it is mm. indeed live performance, a live performance tool. little jammy mixer. And you can, as we were saying before, you can add a MIDI controller if you want to like create a sort of dedicated performative workspace. Mm. But it's like small, battery operated. Very cool, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. I think so. It's just like mad. <laughs> so yeah, Matt, thank you so much. No problem. Uh, links below to the whole field system if you are so inclined. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.